I'm Grace Looker, a BASF seed agronomist, and we are here today in a field in Ross County, Ohio, which looking across the field, we can see a lot of yellowing. This is all caused by a disease known as Sudden Death Syndrome. Sudden Death Syndrome was a disease that was first discovered in Arkansas in 1971, but it has quickly made its way throughout the Midwest and is now found in most soybean growing areas in the United States. So where does Sudden Death Syndrome start? Sudden death syndrome is actually a disease that infects the plants very, very soon after planting. So it's a common misconception that sudden death syndrome actually occurs later in the growing season because that's when we see the foliar symptoms. But sudden death syndrome actually occurs very soon after planting because technically it is a root disease. So the fungus Fusarium virguliforme infects the roots of those plants very soon after planting. And then we typically see the disease later season in August, early September after heavy rains because the fungus in those roots gets flushed up as toxins into the leaves, creating the foliar symptoms. The foliar symptoms first start to occur as small yellow spots. And then as they grow, we can see the spots grow bigger and we can also see them starting to turn brown in between the veins. But in a couple of weeks, Sudden death syndrome becomes very clear as those spots get larger, they become these dark brown lesions, also known as intervenal chlorosis, because you can see that these lesions are occurring in between the veins. The vein is still bright green, whereas all of this browning in the lesion is occurring between the veins. Something else we can see about sudden death syndrome is that it actually creates enough necrosis on those leaves that the entire leaf ends up withering and falling off, leaving just the petiole intact. One other sign of sudden death syndrome that we don't see on every plant, but we can see in more severely affected plant is this bluish whitish growth on the root. Sudden death syndrome typically occurs in congruence with soybean cyst nematode. The two are often found together and having heavier soybean cyst nematode pressure typically means we will see heavier sudden death syndrome pressure as well. This disease can look almost identical to another disease called brown stem rot. Sudden death syndrome and brown stem rot have very similar foliar symptoms. So the easiest way to tell which one you have is by splitting open the stem and looking at the inside of the plant. What we are looking at here is the pith of the plant, which is this very center part that is called the pith. If the pith is white, then you have sudden death syndrome, which is what we see here. If this pith had been brown, that would be a telltale sign that this was instead brown stem rot. So there are a few different things we can do to make sure we are managing for sudden death syndrome. One thing that we can do is to manage for soybean cyst nematode. We can manage for soybean cyst nematode by selecting varieties with either peaking or PI88788 resistance to soybean cyst nematode. Another tactic we have to combat soybean cyst nematode is crop rotation because the nematode only survives on host crops like soybeans. So if we switch to one or two years of corn, that nematode can't survive on that corn because it is not a host crop and that helps limit the amount of soybean cyst nematode pressure as well. One of the best tools that we have available for sudden death syndrome management is selecting the right variety. Varieties have very strong difference in their tolerance to sudden death syndrome. No variety is going to be a silver bullet for sudden death syndrome, but we can select for a variety that has very strong tolerance and avoid varieties that are more susceptible to sudden death syndrome like the ones that we are seeing in this field. Another tool that we have available is a seed treatment called Alevo. Alevo is a seed treatment that goes on the soybeans and it helps protect the plant against both sudden death syndrome and nematodes. 